If you've ever wondered how to get from here to here, it's a long story. But if you want it bad enough, it's worth it. This is the long story of how my friends and I went from the backyard to running professional wrestling shows. This is Backyard Wrestling Cinema. Hello and welcome to Backyard Wrestling Cinema, episode number 7. When we last left off, we had introduced some new members to our roster. Our roster now included original members, myself, who wrestled under the name Denver Street, Slug, who wrestled as Slug, Jimmy Kuby, who wrestled as Tommy Thunder. We were also able to add Homeboy Joe Slice and Rico DMF. And in the fall of 2001, Tim the Enforcer and Joe D of Misery, collectively known as Damage Inc., would make their debut. Also, we would have a newcomer named Brian Champion. Now, Brian Champion also wrestled as another character known as Enigma. We started setting up a feud between Brian Champion or Enigma and Rico DMF, and it turned out to be one of our best feuds. See, we were putting Rico DMF in the position of a later Chris Jericho or what I would consider the Jake Roberts role. Sort of the guy who works with all the newcomers and gets them ready and gets them elevated. Elevated for what? I don't know. We weren't on TV. Nobody was watching these shows besides us, but we treated it like it was a real thing. So it was Rico's job to work with the new guys and get them over, despite the fact that there was no audience there. I always loved wrestling in the fall. Even to this day, when I go outside on the right fall day, it still feels like it did all those years ago. I can remember the sound of the leaves, the smell of the leaves, just the atmosphere, all that crunching sound. I just loved wrestling in the fall. It was one of my favorite things we were able to do with backyard wrestling. Have you no self respect? Come on, give it to me. You like your title. Ah! Ah! You may be noticing our ring was a little bit run down, and we kind of just worked with what we had. Shots to the face. Oh, it's, oh, he's just slapping him now. That's just not right. Oh, and Brian Champion throws it back. Going up the ladder. Brian Champion stumbling up that ladder. Basically, there were four wooden posts. There was ropes all around the ring, except for one side because I was determined. I was convinced for some reason that the camera would not be able to see past those ropes and it would block the action. So we actually left one side missing for some reason. Those ropes were then covered with garden hose. We had a ladder in one corner because the ropes were not sturdy enough to stand on. So the ladder acted like your top rope, essentially. He hit his head on the ladder. <laughs> Out of everything we had over the years, the ring was definitely our most upgradable piece of hardware. We constantly were working on it and trying to improve it to the best of our ability and our limited budget. I mentioned before the inspiration of things like CKY and Jackass and what that meant for impressionable young teenagers. And perhaps there's no better example than our next match, which was a Millennium Poo Poo match. We decided to hang bags of dog poo around the corner and the object was you had to beat your opponent with these bags. As I sit here now, 20 years Years later, I'm wondering why the f somebody would do this. I don't know. We thought it was funny at the time. Disgusting. But it also still makes me laugh, so. Each bag is a different feces. Oh, 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 right in the face with the poo. Oh, into the crowd. Oh, God. So getting down and dirty inside the crowd. And Slug taking it all. Slug, they're back in the ring. Oh, arm ringer! Top of the face! Kick to the... Kick to the blues. He kicked 
Let's enlighten the blues. As I mentioned, Brian Champion was also wrestling as Enigma. So obviously at some point, we had to unmask him and reveal that Enigma was in fact Brian Champion. Now the real reason he would wear a mask was he was afraid all of his baseball friends would see him doing this backyard wrestling show, even though this, these tapes didn't exist anywhere outside of our homes. He was convinced he would get caught and then not be allowed to play baseball, so he wanted to wear a mask. As he got more and more comfortable, he decided to lose the mask, so we merged his two characters into one. I think so. You were taller and less charismatic last week. It's not worth That was last week. This week, I'm not gonna use this. I'm not gonna use Hey, hey, this. hey, hey, this is a children's game. And I'm not gonna use this. Brian Champion is the Enigma. Every week. Damn you! Look, 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 look. Oh, Rico just rocking it with the clothesline. Oh. oh! After Homeboy Joe Slice won the world title, he held it for most of the fall right into the winter of 2001 before Tommy Thunder would finally win the title from him. It's called for signaling with the hat of sorts. This better be good enough to put homeboy away. Yes. Oh! <laughs> it's a slingshot into the water! Is that the fossilizer? Wait! Oh! And a face buster! That's it! Oh. One, two, three! And we have a new world champion! We were heading into a new big event, and our big event was called Double or Nothing, which you may have heard recently. But this was way before then, and we started doing vignettes and promos and stuff like that, and really building up the show and kind of getting back to our roots. No, we tried it. The first one we did, they had the old equipment, and the old equipment works with EP. I need a towel, right? You're recording right now, aren't you? And one of the big vignettes we did was dyeing Rico DMF's hair. The match I had with that Brian Champion really whooped the plum. And he knows what the Blue Biscuit's are all about now. <sighs> Brian Champion! Can't wait till I get my hands on him again. Now I gotta whoop Brian. Brian Champion. Yeah. Please, I what? And the blue biscuit is this? <laughs> One of the big matches for Double or Nothing was myself as Denver Street against Enigma in a last man standing match. And this was possibly going to be one of Enigma's last matches for a long time as he got ready for the baseball season once again. Canadian concussion. <laughs> oh, confetti all over him. Pure mockery of Enigma. Uh -oh. Tire filled with icky water. <laughs> Running straight oh. on the uh, canoe of doom. Canoe of doom. They're both down. They're both down. What? The match with Enigma was supposed to be his final match for us for a long time. However, our schedule kept evolving and so did his, and he was able to stick around for a little bit longer. And in just a few short weeks, he would end up having his final match. And his final appearance for HWF would mark the end of the HWF. Smashing him over the head with the garbage. He reverses! He reverses! Oh, he reverses! He reverses! Oh, he reverses! Oh, he reverses. Oh, he reverses. Breaking the door. Who? What? 